Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm building the Airfix kit in 172nd scale of the FA-18 Hornet from Top Gun Maverick the movie. Now if you're thinking of buying one of these kits and just want to know what's inside the box then there is a companion video showing you all of that already available. And very soon there will be also a combo video of today's content, the box opening and some bonus historical material. All of these will be available on my channel. Now if you enjoyed today's video, and I really hope you do, then please do remember to subscribe to the channel. All you have to do is click on that small logo down there in the bottom right corner and at no cost to you and enormous benefit to me, you become a subscriber. If you want to support future productions, you can do that through Patreon or you can buy that through Buy Me A Coffee. Links to both of these are in the information box below. You'll also find a link to the Airfix online store. If you click through that and then buy anything there, this Maverick Hornet or anything else indeed, then Airfix at no extra cost to you will donate a small amount of money to this channel. And of course, if you're an Airfix Club member, you'll get your online 10% discount as well. Enough of all of that, let's get on and build Maverick's F-18 from Top Gun Maverick the movie in 172nd scale from Airfix. First thing to do is get rid of the flash around the cockpit tub. There really is a lot of this, these moulds are 40 years old. Some of the parts, like this control column, are very fine and next to chunky sprue, so it will need to be very carefully cut off then carefully cleaned up with a blade or some sanding. When it is cleaned up, the control column goes into the cockpit tub. Next, the ejection seat goes into place, not much detail on this one. Then a quick go around with the dark gold gray interior color. When they're set, I paint the top box of the ejection seat black and also the top of the control column. The seat of the ejection seat itself I'm painting in a medium olive. There's no instrument decal so I've painted the instrument panel black, used green for the screens and bits of white, yellow and red for the controls. I think it looks okay. The instrument panel goes into the top half of the fuselage piece like so. The cockpit tub sits in the bottom half of the fuselage. I'm also adding this piece, which is the top of the main gear well, and the tailplanes or horizontal stabilizers, which just slot in. Don't glue them in if you want them to move. Now, if you're having a centerline fuel tank, you need to drill out two holes for the pylon. Otherwise, just go ahead and put the two halves of the fuselage together. Tape it all up and leave it to set. The air intakes for the engines come in these fiddly bits, two for the outside of the inlet, and then these sit up against the inside splitter plate. I can't believe that they would mould it like this these days. Then there's this small ramp that has to go on top of the intake. The long root extensions or vortex generators of the wings have an upper and lower skin that need to be joined up and left to dry. Onto the wings, and I'm going to drill out some holes now for the stores using a 1.2mm drill bit. The instructions don't say what to use, but this seems about right. Then the lower wing skin can go into the upper wing section for each side. I'm going to clamp them together first, then use ultra thin cement to bond them. They seem to fit together better this way. Then when they're dry, the wings can slot into the side of the fuselage. The fit is really not very good. When you've got as good as you can, then clamp them in place for a while and maybe fill in the gaps later. Then the root extensions slot into place. They sit roughly in line with the join between the fuselage top and bottom halves, so they help to hide the line. Then the air inlets go to place. The tiny rectangular bit on top sticks into the slot next to the fuselage. Then these fairings on the sides go on. These are stores pylons for the Sparrow missiles. The tail fins just stick onto the outside of the rear fuselage. 
going to leave all that to set solidly so I'm taking some time now to mask the canopy. For the canopy itself I use plastic tape for the edge as it's easier to follow curves I find and it cuts very cleanly in the corners. Now on the windshield I'll fill in the gap in the middle with liquid mask. This is starting to get a bit old and a bit dry so I might get thrown out after this. The canopy gets filled in with paper masking tape. I'll paint the inside of the cockpit front black before I fit the canopy opening supports and this little ram. There are different pieces you can use if you want the canopy open. Then there's this small transparent piece to represent the heads up display before the canopy can go on. Followed by the windshield. Both of these are set in place with clear PVA glue that needs to dry for a little while. A few other tasks now. One of them is making the fuel tanks for the wings, two halves that stick together. I can put the exhausts onto the ends of the fuselage as well at this point. When the fuel tanks have dried, I'm going to fit them onto their pylons. Different sized holes tell you which way round they go. Then with the body mainly finished, I can start spraying. First a grey primer coat, then a light ghost grey all over. I'll give that a good hour or two to set properly, then I'll mask off the spine and the fins as they're getting a coat of black paint. Once it's all properly dried again, I can start on the decals. These coach lines are the trickiest things to apply. You need to keep them moving with dabs of water on your brush. Then when they're all in the right place, give them some decal setting solution to help them mould to the contours of the aircraft correctly. The rest of the decals are simple enough. I'm going to paint the exhausts in burnt iron while the decals are drying. Now for some stores, first the AIM-7 Sparrow missiles, then the fuel tanks which have been sprayed black. Finally the bomb racks go on, I'll let those set before I put the bombs themselves on. In the meantime I have the undercarriage to fit, the main gears fit into a square hole and are pretty sturdy straight away. Then I have to fit the main gear doors, three on each side, these are a bit more fiddly. The nose gear leg also sits firmly, a location hole and a pit in the gear well. The well also has some doors to fit. And I must remember the tail hook, this being a naval aircraft. So once the bomb racks and pylons are reasonably secure, I can put the bombs on. They've been painted in US olive drab with a yellow ring around the nose to indicate live rounds. Then when the undercarriage legs have set firmly, I can put the wheels on. Two nose wheels, followed by the main wheels. Now I'll take a moment to go around the fuselage fitting all the aerials next. These are very fiddly things that just don't fit into the slots they're designed for so there's a lot of sanding and trimming needed. And once the gear doors have actually set I'll go around their edges in red paint, something the US Navy does. And I'll also complete the weapons load now with the AIM-9 Sidewinder on each wingtip. We're almost done now and the ram for the air brake goes in and then the air brake can sit on top of it in the open position. All that's left now is to peel off the masking from the canopy and Maverick's F-18 is complete. This kit is really showing its age to be honest. Mediocre moulds in different design, dodgy fit, strange decals, 
All the things we once thought we'd consigned to the past. It's even the wrong type of F-18 for the movie, as the F-A-18E Super Hornet is a very, very different bird. Is this a great kit? No, absolutely not. Will it make a good toy for someone to build along with a youngster? Yes, it will. Treat it as building a reasonably accurate toy and it will be a delight. Think of it as an enthusiast model and it will disappoint unless you're willing to treat it as a real challenge. Or buy the Revel kit. So there we have the F-18 Hornet from Airfix. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, and I hope you have, then please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. All you have to do is click on that small logo down there in the bottom right corner. You become a subscriber, doesn't cost you anything, helps me enormously. In any case, thank you so much for watching today, and I hope I'll see you next time.